Hi, I'm Mukash and this is the second video in the series about active disturbance rejection control. It's going to be shorter than the previous one, but with lots of math, so I once again encourage you to pause and rewind whenever you need. Let's get started. In the previous video, we've learned about the output-based ADRC. One of its drawbacks was the necessity of providing a reference signal derivative or employing a tracking differentiator to estimate it. In this video, we'll derive so-called error-based ADRC, which solves this problem in a clever way. Before we dive into more complex solutions, let's ask a simple question. Can we just assume that the reference signal derivative is zero? It might seem like a dumb idea, but it can actually work very well. Imagine that controlled plan is an HVAC system where the reference signal is the desired temperature that changes only when the user decides to change it. In such a case, the reference signal derivative is zero most of the time and we can use the much simpler system as shown in the bottom image. What if we are not so lucky to have a constant reference signal? Main idea behind IDRC is to estimate the total disturbance, which captures everything that doesn't fit assumed chained integrator dynamics model. What if we take this idea one step further and estimate even more total disturbance, which would include the reference signal derivatives? Let's start with the system dynamics and rewrite it in terms of error signals. The error signal is derived as the difference between the reference signal and the output signal. The output signal is the first state of the system, so let's substitute it. We can obtain the derivative of the error signal by differentiating the above equation. Now let's use the fact that the x1 dot is equal to x2. Same logic applies to the second derivative of the error signal but we'll start from the last result this time. Let's once again use system dynamics equation and substitute x to dot. Finally, after simplifying and rearranging the terms, we get the complete system. Now let's lump r double dot and xi together and call it xi star. That will be our even more total disturbance. After cleaning up, we get the error dynamics of ADRC controlled system. Let's save this result and do two more things. First, let's define a new state vector xe, which is the error and its derivative. Then, we can rewrite the error dynamics in terms of xe. Since xe1 is the error, its derivative is the derivative of the error signal, which as we know from the second equation is equal to xe2. Following the same logic, the derivative of xe2 is equal to the second derivative of the error signal. Let's now substitute it as well. This is how we arrive at the error dynamics in terms of the new state vector xe. Now we are ready to derive a new extended state observer and a control law. But before that, let's recap our goals. Main goal of the extended state observer was to estimate the total disturbance xi, so the new observer needs to track the even more total disturbance xi star. We do all that in order to make the output signal y track the reference signal r. That's equivalent to making the error signal e go to zero, which can be rephrased as making the first state of the new state vector xe go to zero. Our error dynamics looks very similar to the system dynamics, which we use to derive the output based extended state observer. It means we can safely assume that the new observer will have the same structure as the previous one visible now on the screen, consisting of prediction and correction terms. Notice that I name it output based observer because the correction term uses difference between the output signal and its estimate. Now 
let's derive the new observer. We can start by writing the prediction term for the xe1 according to error dynamics equations. Next, we can write the correction term. This time, the correction term uses the difference between the error signal and its estimate. Prediction term for xe2 is straightforward. Of course, we don't know the disturbance xi star, so we'll use the estimate of the disturbance z star instead. xe2 needs correction term as well. As you remember, the disturbance estimate equation has no prediction term, only correction. This is how we arrive at the error-based extended state observer. What about the control law? Let's derive it now. We'll start with the one that we used for the output-based controller. It was a simple PD controller extended with the disturbance estimate subtraction. It's fed by the difference between the reference and the state estimate which isn't exactly equal to our estimated error, but we can consider it as equivalent. Let's then do the substitution. And one more step to use the new state vector xe instead of the error signals. We left the disturbance estimate in the control law as it was, but pay close attention to the error dynamics equations, where control signal u has a negative sign in front of it. Therefore, we need to change the sign of the disturbance estimate in the control law. Before we give it a try in simulation, let's take a look at the block diagram of the whole system. This is how the error-based ADRC system looks like. There's no tracking differentiator and you can clearly see that the reference signal is used only to calculate error signal, which is then fed to the extended state observer. Please keep in mind that this is only one of many possible configurations of error-based ADRC and you can find many variations in the literature. Ok, let's see how our error-based ADRC works in the simulation. We have a very similar modeling toolkit um, set up as before. We have our actuated pendulum which didn't change and we have the extended observer which is uh, still using some arbitrary gains, but now it has the new state variables xe1 hat, xe2 hat, z star and it has the new um, input xe1 which is an actual error and the, of course, control input. And as you can see we have the same equations that we see in, in the video uh, with, the, with the new correction term and up and prediction terms updated accordingly. Same goes for the controller, mm, still some arbitrary gains. We have the mm, inputs for, from the observer for xe1 hat, xe2 hat uh, and z star and of course you see being calculated as our mm, control signal. And here as you can see we have the prediction term, the derivative term plus z star which is the correction for total uh, disturbance estimate. And once again we have the controlled pendulum being uh, the system that combines them all. We have our reference signal defined, we have the uh, tracking error which is reference minus the actual um, angular position and we have once again the integrated square error. And as you can see the connections there are pretty straight uh, forward. Our reference signal is still sine of t, which means it has the derivatives that are non-zero. Mm, and we have the controller output going to the pendulum input and to the observer, and we have error going into the observer and observer outputs going into the controller. Here's the instantiation of the system. And once again we simulate it from 0 to 10 seconds. And let's see how it works. And here you can see the actual um, angular position and the reference. And as you can see except from little bit bumpy start then it tracks the reference signal very nicely. Which is also visible on the um, integrated 
error plot where we can see the jump at the beginning and then it goes up very very slowly pretty nice performance also the mm, input signals look pretty reasonable they're a little bit bumpy in the beginning when it needs to mm, let's say bring the system stabilize the system and then it mm, it's pretty nice and smooth and once again we can ask the question whether this uh, total uh, disturbance correction term that star actually uh, helps so once again we can easily check it let's comment this out uh, run the simulation again and look at the results and here you can clearly see that we, without the z star the tracking error is way bigger and here you can see that this is like order of magnitude bigger which means that Yes, that still works. Let's do a quick recap. We reformulated system dynamics as error dynamics with a new state vector Xe. We lumped reference signal derivatives and total disturbance into even more total disturbance term Xi star. We derived extended state observer and controller equations accordingly. Finally, we verified the new setup in a simulation and saw that it works as expected. In the next videos, we will finally see how to properly calculate the gains for the observer and the controller. Many of you asked for simulations in Simulink. I don't have a license for it, but I'll show you how to do it in Xcos, which is an open source alternative. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.